Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. I'm really excited to show you today how you can visualize missing values in R using the great non-ER package by Nicholas Tierney. You can even visualize missing values in coordinate systems. This may not seem possible at first thought because well of their nature, missingness, but the non-ER package finds a great way of doing just that to help us find patterns in missing data, which can be very useful and a key task in data exploration. The data I'm using today is from the ggplot2 package, the diamonds data set. Those of you who've worked with it may know that there are no missings in this data, so that was a great chance for me to explore some ways of simulating missing data problems. So um, the data set comprises 10 variables, but I'm just using three for today's video, the price in dollars, the carat, um, the weight of the diamond, and lastly, for the second example, the cut, the quality of the cut. Um, I just took a random sample of 5,000 data points from this larger data set um, to make the visualizations um, a bit easier to, to read and to avoid overplotting, and I introduced some missing values. If you want to see how I did that, you can check that out on my code, um, which I put on my GitHub profile. There's a link in the description. Right, so to get a quick overview, we can use the vismiss function. It's originally from the vis.dat package, also by Nicholas Tierney, but it was exported to Narnia, so uh, we can just load the Narnia package to use that function, and it gives us a quick overview. So here we can see quickly the only missing values in this data set appear in the price column. Um, just under 5% of the values in the price column are missing, and for the whole data set, for all the cells in the data set, the share of missing values is 0.5%. What we also see from this visualization is that um, there's no coherent cluster of missing values across all the rows in the data set, the observations, um, but the missing values in the price column are spread out across the range of values. So this is a quick impression with a simple one-liner. But now on to the scatter plot, the coordinate system that I promised you. Um, we can just plot the price against the carat or weight of the diamonds. And I do that here and you see, I'm just using a simple function that was um, provided by the non-ear package geomisspoint to take into account missing values. So by default in gdplot2, geompoint would not plot missing values, would ignore missing values. Um, and there's no price coordinate for these missing values. But here we see the prices of course only make sense um, as positive values above zero and the missings are plotted below zero in a different color, so there's no price associated to them, but we still get to see the range of the carat values when the price column is missing. So that's very useful, and here immediately we see a clear pattern. Um, price values are only missing for a very limited range of carat values. So we get a quick impression of that here. And I think it's much more convenient to do that visually than to do the number crunching and just to look at tables and numbers. So a simple one-liner geo miss point can show us this pattern. Right, on to the second example. Um, I manipulated the data again to create a different pattern of missing values. And now we see the missings are spread out more across the range of carat values. So here, the missings look more random now. And another feature of the Narnier package is that it is fully integrated into ggplot2. It just extends ggplot2 with um, new geoms, so we can make full use of all the power that ggplot2 brings to the table. So now to find patterns in the missing data here, I use the facet red function. So we do that on the next slide here. Um, the same plot as before, but I added one line of code to um, split the plot into facets by the cut variable. And now again, we see very quickly where the problematic missing values are, where well, they may be problematic, but we see that missings appear only when the cut is ideal. Um, so we get a very quick impression of that here um, using the gplot built-in facet wrap function and um, in, in addition to the geom point uh, geo miss point function, sorry, from the Narnia package. So very little coding required to discover the pattern in missing values. Of course, not always you will have patterns in missing values, but it really makes sense to think about where missing values come from and how they behave in your data. So these are really convenience function to do that. 
Um, a few more words about the Nanio package. So it was written by Nicholas Tierney, so a shout out to him for this great package. Um, I provided a link to his website here, he's on Twitter, and you can check out his GitHub profile. It's a very nice example of a well-documented package. It has several vignettes, so you can try out, for example, help package equals Narnia to get a link to the vignettes. You can also use the browse vignettes function, of course. Um, so there are several vignettes. There's a very in-depth, detailed introductory vignette, getting started with Narnia. And then there are dedicated vignettes for special topics like functions to replace values with NA. So the Narnia package can help in doing that how to explore imputed values, and there's also a very useful and impressive gallery of missing data visualizations. So I encourage you to check that out. Another idea that the Narnia package introduces that I won't go into detail here for the sake of brevity of this video, um, the shadow matrix, it adds an additional data structure um, and associates it with your data. It has the same dimensions as the original data. And for each cell in your data set, it indicates missingness, NA or not NA. And this can be very useful when you want to compare how missing values um, behave compared to non-missing data. So you can use that as a, as a grouping variable in ggplot, for example, to give different colors to data that have missing somewhere or that don't have missings. And also you can evaluate the quality of your missing value imputations. Right, we're almost through. Last slide for this video, um, an outlook on further topics. So imputing missing values is a huge topic, of course. Um, the Nanio package has several examples that highlight use of the Simputation package that works very well together with Nanio. So you'll find code examples in the vignettes in Nanio. But there are other packages for missing value imputation. For example, MICE is very popular. There's a package called Amelia, which is named after the aviation pioneer Amelia Earhart, who tragically went missing while attempting a circumnavigational flight of the globe. Um, and if you're more into machine learning and want to um, tackle your data from that perspective and you want to do it in a tidyverse style, you can check out the tidy models collection of packages. And one of the packages there is called Recipes that helps you describe um, data preparation steps and apply them conveniently to both your training and testing data. Um, so there are lots of useful functions for data preparation and the functions that are linked to missing value imputation are called step underscore impute underscore and then there are several functions um, that start with these prefixes. So you can do simple things like mean or median or mode imputation but you'll see that for many use cases um, this is not a very good idea and may not um, be an accurate representation of your missing values. So often more sophisticated methods are advisable, for example, using bagging, bootstrap aggregating, or um, the very powerful but non-parametric and quite simple um, k-nearest neighbors approach, for example, k and n. You can also use that to impute missing values, and there are also functions for imputing enrolling windows. Um, most of you will probably know CRAN as the place where we usually install packages from, but CRAN also has some dedicated websites, so-called CRAN task views. So there's a CRAN task view dedicated to missing data. So you'll find lots of package recommendations and so on there. It's a simple website, but contains a lot of information. So it's very useful. And also I'd like to encourage you to check out more Narnia functions that I couldn't cover in this video. Um, there are several functions that start with gg underscore miss ggmissvar, ggmissCase, ggmissFactor, so you can try these out. And there are also functions to get numerical summaries like missvar summary or missvar table. And also the same applies for cases rather than variables. Well, that was it for today. I hope you found that useful. All the best for your own data analysis, data visualizations, and especially dealing with missing values. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. That really helps. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.